So to set up the A to D, we have to set addcon1 is equal to 0x10 in hexadecimal. Um, the reason for this is it has to do with the clock cycle, the A to D. I don't want to get too into it, but just know that you have to have this command at the beginning of your main function there. You only have to set it once, and then once you do, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to build a function to read my sensor so that I don't have to type in a whole bunch of commands every time I want to read my sensor. And I'm going to put this function at the top of my program before my main function so that I don't have to define it at the beginning of the program. This has to do with the C code itself. There are other methods to do this, but this is my preferred method. So as with C code, we want to build a function, and we want the value returned by the function to be an unsigned character. So we're going to type in unsigned character so that once we read the value of our sensor and it returns from the function, it's going to give us our value. So I'm going to call my function read sensor. And this is what I'll type into my program every time I want to read my sensor. I set my input uh, code or my input value to unsigned character channel or ch. This is the variable I'm going to pass into my function to select the channel I want to read. So addcon0 is the instruction that we send to read our signal. This is actually a memory address in the PIC. If you'd like to know more about it, send uh, search the PDF file for the 16F690 and type in addcom0. And there's a very detailed uh, description of what it actually does and how it works. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to explain to you what you need to know for it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to clear addcom0 to make sure it's all zeros. And uh, this is actually setting the A to D to off. Now this next line of code might seem a little confusing, but I'll try and break it down. Basically, as we can see inside of the 16, uh, 16 F690 uh, manual, that we have to tell the A to D what channel to read. The channel that you're reading can be found by the pin diagram. So if we look at our pin diagram here, if we want to use RB4, which is pin 13, we have to set addcon0 to AN10. So, so we understand what pin we're reading, that's pin 13 on the PIC, which would be this RB4 slash AN10 slash yada yada yada. So it's actually pin 13 on the PIC that we're going to read our sensor on. You can actually select any one of these pins that has the analog channel on it. So any one of these pins that say AN4, AN5, any one of these pins will actually read an analog signal. If it does not say AN and it has a dash there, it will not read an analog signal. So since I'm going to arbitrarily pick RB4, we're going to want to set the, the ADCON0 channel to AN10. So if we look at the PIC PDF file, we can see here that AN10 is equal to 1010. So if you do not know how to convert uh, binary into decimal, we can use our calculator built into Windows uh, Vista or Windows 7 here. Go to View Programmer. We select Binary from our section here. Type in 1010, which is actually, if you understand binary, uh, each w one of these bits represents a decimal. So the first bit represents 1, the second bit represents 2, the third bit represents 4, and the fourth bit represents 8. So the way to do this in your head is you only you figure out which one is one so the two bit and the uh, eight bit are one so you would add those together 
which you would get 10. So if we convert this to decimal, we get the value 10 in decimal. So understanding that, I can explain this code. So what you're doing is you're taking the value sent in your variable, so through channel. Channel, if it equals, if we send 10 to our channel here, if we send 10 to our function, which will enter our channel. So 10 will equal 1010. This part here actually shifts the bits. So it's telling it shift bits to the left. And the two tells it how many bits to shift. So since we know 10 represents 1010 in binary, we get this value is our variable. Okay, this is binary. So when we tell this value to shift the bits two places to the left, we end up with our 1010 moved over two decimal places. The purpose of this is, as we can see in adcon0, these four bits here, bits 2 through 5, are the channel bits. So we're shifting the value of 10 two bits over to select the correct channel in adcon0. And that is what this command does. If this doesn't fully make sense to you, do not worry. You don't have to know that how it works. Just understand that this command is setting your channel that you're going to read. The next thing we want to do is we want to turn the A to D on. And to do this, we set the add on bit to 1 inside of addcon0 register. For more information about this, please refer to the PDF file for the APIC. A very important point to note out is that the A to D will take a period of time before it can actually do a conversion after it's been turned on. The reason for this is that the A to D uses a capacitor to read the voltage value of your sensor. So when you turn the A to D on, this capacitor starts to charge and if it's not given enough time to fully charge you will not read the correct value on your sensor. Indication of this is if you have a sensor that can read up to like say 40 inches your sensor will only be able to read 10 inches because it's not fully charging the capacitor inside of the A to D. So to allow the A to D to pause after turning on and allow that capacitor to charge. We put in a for loop that counts to 5,000, giving the A to D enough time to charge the capacitor. 5,000 seemed to be the best value that worked for me. If you guys find that you can reduce the value of 5,000 and still get the full range of your sensor, please let me know what that value is. I'd be interested in, hear in hearing. So once we turned on the A to D, we have all of our settings right, and we've given the capacitor enough time to charge. We set the go done bit equal to 1. The go done bit actually starts the conversion. Once we set the go done bit to 1, it will remain as 1 till the A to D has been done is done with the conversion. So to pause our program until the A to D is finally done converting, we put in a while command, while go done. Since a while command continues its loop until the condition is false, one being true, zero being false, as long as go done equals one, it'll sit there and loop. Once the conversion is actually done, the PIC will actually set go done is equal to zero. This is automatically done by the PIC when the conversion is done. So by setting while go done, the program will pause until the PIC sets go done back to zero. Since the A to D is done converting, we then say add on equals zero. And this turns the A to D off, which slightly reduces the current draw of the PIC saving power. Once the conversion is done, we want to 
read the value that the A to D has converted, which is stored in uh, a, a location called addresh. It's a memory address inside of the PIC. So to read this value, we have the function return the value of addresh. Addresh being A to D res resolution high. More information can be found inside of the PDF file for the PIC file pertaining to addresh. So to return the, re the converted value from our sensor, we say return addresh, this command here. This allows us to call our function and use it as a variable itself. One other thing that I forgot to mention earlier on is since we're using uh, i as a variable, we have to declare the function. So to do this, we set i earlier. And to do this, you can see I set i equal to zero and set it up as an integer uh, before we run our function here. Now that we have our function built, we can easily read our sensors. To do this, whenever we want to read our sensor value, we type the command of our function inside of our main program. Here's an example of what it would look like. So this is an if statement using our function to read our sensor. Our actual function is this part here. The 10 represents the channel that we want to read that corresponds to the pin connected to our sensor that if you recall we got from this table here so channel 10 being AN10 RB4 pin 13 when we say function and then we put the 10 when we say sensor read or read sensor and put 10 in, as the value we're reading the value from pin 13 which is channel 10 if we wanted to store the value from our sensor into something like a variable, we could say something similar to this. Oops, forgot to put the semicolon. This would this command here would store the value from channel 10 into sensor 1. This here would store the value from sensor channel 5 into sensor 2. And if we look at our chart here, we can see that channel 5 is equal to RC1. RC1 being pin 7, you see we're reading the sensor on this pin here.